Hi, I'm Kevin Keith, and you're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hi everyone, John Liebman here. You're watching for BassPlayersOnly.com. Coming to you today on location from Hollywood, California, with our special guest today, renowned bassist and stick player, Kevin Keith. Hey, Kevin. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Really good. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for having me. Well, thank you. It's uh, it's quite an honor. I will get to the stick in a minute because that is uh, quite quite a remarkable instrument that Emmett Chapman came up with, and uh, the the success is not really surprising because of it, its uniqueness and and how many people are playing it. Tony Levin and Don Schiff and Steve Adelson and so many others. And uh, I want to talk a little bit. I'll go back a little bit before you took up the stick. You were just a bass player, right? Regular yeah. bass player. Tell me a, a little bit about what you did before you discovered the stick as a bass player. Okay. I started as a guitar player, switched to bass, and uh, I actually came across a stick one day by accident in a music store, and I loved the way it looked. And after looking at it, I realized, hey, wait a minute, this is a cool instrument because it gives me basically the range of piano, yet I can still do all those cool tricks I learned as a guitar as a bassist, bending strings, slap and pop and harmonics. So I thought, okay, this would be like bass and guitar together on steroids. And I was right and I was really wrong all at the same time. It's more of its own animal. What were you doing before you discovered the stick, though? Before I was uh, playing stick, I was spending a lot of time as a bass player. Uh, I'm also a music technologist and audio engineer, but bass, bass guitar is my main instrument. That was the instrument that I went out and did gigs as, and that's the instrument that I really identified myself with as a player. So uh, the stick actually kind of made sense because I still considered myself in the mindset of, okay, I'll bring the bass ideology over to this, this instrument, but then add chords, harmonics, and some other things. So... Well, tell us a little bit about this. I can see there are 10 strings, and okay. I can see the thickest strings are in the middle, and then they get progressively lighter as you get toward the, the ends. And I know that the lower strings are tuned in fifths, and I know that the upper strings are tuned in fourths. So this much some of us might be used to, but, <laughs> but in aggregate here, I, I can't imagine what your mindset would be like to approach this, but obviously there's a way to do it because you do it very well. So... Tell us, explain some of the thinking behind the design of this truly remarkable instrument. Absolutely. Uh, when I first, you know, it's interesting, I had to actually step away from bass guitar at one point to really be successful at stick because I had to, I had to become reborn again as a musician. Uh, otherwise, what was happening is I was taking bass guitar ideas and trying to translate them on the stick, whereas in rea the reality is you have to make stick its own entity. In doing so, I was looking at the fifth tuning and it began to make it sense. The cool thing about this, uh, the fifth tuning on the bass side, these been the bass strings here, is that if I play a chord like uh, this, for example, it would literally take me to play this one chord on piano, I have to use both hands to hit the reeds from the lowest note to the highest note. So the advantages became obvious. I have this ginormous range. Ginormous, is that a word? It is. I've heard it. <laughs> of this ginormous amount of range with the chords I can do. What's the lowest note? What is this string here? Uh, this string here at its lowest is a uh, low D. I'm sorry, a low B. A low B, like yes. on a, a five or six string bass? That is correct. Same pitch, okay. That is correct. So it, at the same time, I get the really low notes, hit the really high notes, it's level one hand left over. Plus I've invented a technique called slap tap where I'm actually holding down, for example, a chord with one hand, and then with the other hand, I'll actually do a combination of playing slap. A little difficult to hear, okay. but it actually works out. I have videos online that actually sh uh, demonstrate this pretty well. Uh, I have one song on YouTube. If you uh, Google, not Google, sorry, YouTube my name, Kevin Keith, and put in voices in my head, you'll actually see a track of me actually doing that. So. Is that a tune that you composed? Yes. You want to do, I, do I want to know what the inspiration of that tune was? <laughs> Being in Hollywood too long. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know, it was one of those kind of tunes where my whole approach to stick uh, was kind of like voices in my head in the sense that when I go to stick, I have an idea of what I want to hear, of what I want the instrument to do, and then I just find those notes and I find ways to do it. So my, my whole approach as a stick player is getting the voices in my head out into the instrument 
Okay. No. You you mentioned slap and pop, and then you demonstrated a little bit, but it looked like your thumb was actually more doing more of a plucking thing than an actual, you know, like we think of as slap. That do you correct. do you do this too, or you know? I uh, I do, but this is going to sound really strange because it's fifth tuning. Not only are you playing kind of upside down reverse, but you're also slapping in, in reverse. So everything you do slap wise becomes a mirror image. It it's a very strange thing to get used to if you're coming from the world of a bass player because you already you already have a predetermined idea of what you want to do. But if you walk in the stick kind of as a blank slate with an open mind, it becomes very natural. So yeah, I'm actually the slap itself is actually coming from when my hand lands with the left hand and the pop comes from the thumb. There's a slap oh. and a pop that comes from the thumb. It's it's really, really strange. Okay, that and then out. what are you thinking? I, sometimes I can't get my head around playing the piano because it always seems like you have to be thinking of two things at once, but you want to think of one thing together, and it, it seems <laughs> analogous here. You're doing something with, I guess you're setting up the groove. You're playing the chords, maybe the bass line with yeah. your left hand. Yeah. What are you thinking about, and what, what are some of the things you can do with the right hand? Uh, also chords, melody, improv. You know, what, what, <laughs> how do you approach that as far as the thought process goes? Very good question. You know, uh, I have a video on YouTube uh, called uh, "Keep" uh, song called "Keep On Keeping On." And I've had a lot of people email me and say, "How do you play all the parts at the same time? How do you split your brain in two pieces?" And I always tell people, I don't see it as multiple parts. I see it as one big part. So I hear one big collective sound that just kind of switches back and forth to the listener and to the viewer. It looks a little different. Even when I watch my videos, I look and it's, it's strange. It's like, is that what it looks like when I play? That is, that is weird. But when you're inside yourself in the moment, it doesn't really feel like that. So for me, it's just one big part. Yeah, a good friend of mine, Stuart Ham, is. Oh, wow. He he does a lot of two-handed tapping, and usually on a four-string bass. And he comes from a mus musical family, and and uh, so he grew up with music. He says, you know, it's kind of, if the piano player can do it, he he approaches it like a piano. And you can only really play four notes at a time, but still, he's, he's got that concept. So uh, it sounds like you're doing what he's doing, but you've got more strings to do it with and a bigger range. Yeah, yeah, more strings, a bigger range. Plus, there are, there are things you can do with stick that are... It's unbelievable in that I can do things that I could never do with, with bass guitar or with guitar. I can do with stick because it's... Like there are bass lines I can play on stick that would take me two hands to play as a bass player. If I can do them one handed on stick, I've worked out some strange things. And I can actually embed chords and melodies in it at the same time. It gives me a different amount of freedom. Uh, there's so many different ways you can play it. You can play the stick to where it's like I'm playing chords in the right hand, bass lines in the left, or I can have it to where I'm playing it like one big giant guitar, or I can have it to where I'm just uh, kind of doing pedal tones in the bass and getting a little bit more, uh, more ambitious in the right hand. But the cool thing is that you can switch lanes at any moment. You can write a composition where it starts a certain way, and then this hand takes over as the lead, and then the other hand takes over the lead. It, it's the ultimate freedom. It's unbelievable. I mean, I think I'll spend the rest of my life being a student of its incredible ability. Well, there's definitely a lot to learn. Now you've got me thinking about a, a harp player. I don't even remember how many strings are on a harp, but you've still only got Ten fingers, so there's, yeah. so I'm sure there's there's some commonalities there in the approach. What's keeping you busy these days, Kevin? Uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, by day, I work for Apple Music. I'm the chief studio engineer of uh, Apple Music's Beats One Radio, which has been a great experience. Uh, that and uh, just Apple Music. So I, I actually pay some of your salary, but uh, go. Uh, go ahead. Thank you for that. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> At the same time, I, I write and produce. I have a uh, writer's deal with the division of Warner Brothers Television where I write music for television shows. I uh, also well, You want to name some shows? Oh, man. Yeah, two or three or five. Oh, let's see if I can think of anything offhand. Uh, uh, Didn't mean I'm, to put you on the spot. No, no. You know, it's so weird. I think about, it's, uh, I know Ellen DeGeneres, uh, the Ellen DeGeneres show. Uh, I think The Bachelor is still on. So weird. I'm, I'm such a music guy. I don't really watch television. You, you mean like a like a, a bump or something? Or a yeah. Okay. Uh, bumps, nice. themes, all the above. So it's been good. Also, a lot of that music has been spread out uh, to other divisions outside of Warner Brothers. So it's it, it, writing music for television is strange that you don't really know where your music lands until you get your statements. So I see my stuff that's on the Discovery Channel, uh, CNN, uh, 
God, everything from sitcoms to reality shows. Uh, Do you perform any of that music too, or just write it? No, that stuff's kind of a different animal. So the majority of stuff I perform is very different, more along the lines of like uh, progressive funk and progressive rock. So cool. Yeah, yeah, the instrument really leans itself. Well, the instrument leans itself to anything. My imagination kind of brings me to that world. So. Okay. Boy, you, you take this instrument and a big imagination and the possibilities are truly oh, endless. <laughs> it's something else. I, I constantly look at this instrument, just look at it in the corner thinking, okay, how can I do this differently? If I put one hand here and how could I do I mean, it's it's just so amazing. I mean, Emmett was really on his A game the day he created this. Yeah. I was watching Billy Sheehan perform last night only oh. on four strings, and it's amazing how far his imagination has taken yeah. him. What What about the future, Kevin? What else would you like to do? The future, I'm actually looking at putting together a new band as a steak player and doing some things uh, in 2017. So that's exciting. Well, keep us posted, and we'll be sure to uh, to let all these folks know about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Last question. I, I know you mentioned the day gig, but outside of music, you know, can you imagine what you would be if you were not a bass player or a stick player? Outside of music, you know, it's weird. There are two parts to me. There's the uh, the musician and there's a music technologist. I think I would just, I would always be a music technologist. I mean, I'm the kind of person where if you show me a synthesizer or you show me a piece of gear and it was made in uh, the 70s or the 80s, I'm like, oh yeah, when that came along, it was this big deal because it replaced the blah, blah, blah before it and it inspired these songs by these artists. I'm really, I always find it interesting the influence that technology has on the arts. You know, so I've, uh, coming to it from that aspect, I've kind of gotten myself immersed in it which kind of led to the job at Apple. So, Do, do you remember a, an instrument called, the? I think it was called the Mellophone? Back in Mellotron. the seventh, yeah, you would open it up and you'd actually see tapes in... Mellotron. Se- Mellotron, that's what Mellotron. I meant. Okay, yes. that's been a long time. Yes, I remember the Mellotron. Yeah, that was kind of the, talk about a, it was actually a mechanical sample playback device. Yeah. You literally had an individual tape reel for each string, yeah. And I, I saw a thing on TV with Paul McCartney one time, and he, he was, I think, for, for Strawberry Fields or something. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. hey, there's all kinds of things we can talk about, but the stick is a marvelous instrument, and uh, I, I mean it in the true sense of the word because I, I, I truly marvel at it. It is amazing, and the fact that anybody can play that uh, to, to any degree <laughs> and to play it as well as you do is, uh, is nothing short of remarkable. Thank so you. keep doing what you're doing. Keep us posted on that new project and uh, let us know, and we'll be happy to share the information kevin keith great catching up with you thanks Thank you. thanks for the insight and the lesson and uh boy you just conjured up lots more questions so i think maybe you opened it up for a follow-up interview you know what would love to would love to that'd be great on location with our good friend and stick player kevin keith in hollywood california i'm john liebman you're watching for bassplayersonly.com.